Hello world, this is Zan playing Late Age Calum in Lucid's 2022 Dominions 5 tournament. Uh, this is still just the first round for me. <laughs> Hopefully there's more rounds. Uh, regardless, this is going to be uh, starting in on turn 11. So we search and fail to find sites. We have some crippled units uh, either die or get or go from limping to cripple. We have a battle in the Pepper Plain. So this is me just kind of, I have units on this side of the expansion. And I'm going to go try to take this throne because it seemed, you know, lightly armored enough. But I made a very big mistake here. Uh, this is probably one of the, the first mistake. I, I've made three mistakes, three big mistakes so far, and this is the first one. Uh, you'll see it in a second. One, uh, normally I don't see astral uh, wizards in throne defense, wizards or sages or whatever, as a problem. But I have these elephants, and they just immediately get paralyzed. So that, that, that sucks. <laughs> Uh, and then here's the second mistake, or, or I guess the actual mistake I want to talk about. I forgot to take these guys off of attack archers. Uh, I like doing attack archers during expansion because archers are one of the best ways of killing these lightly armored dudes, despite their shields. And uh, yeah, that's a big oops. Um, if they would have done attack rear, they'd be hopping back here and uh, ideally killing some of these mages. And by killing the mages and commanders, the route happens. But because they went to the archers, these fire elementals are just going to completely trash them. Like, it's not even close. Because even though their magic weapon will kill the fire elementals, they die to the fire shield because they don't have any armor. Uh, so this was embarrassingly bad because I forgot to uh, switch back to attack rear. So I lose almost everything. Uh, for, you know, I mean, I, I did the damage and the next round is going to wipe it out. I didn't kill any of the wizards, which sucks. But, you know, <laughs> it is what it is. Uh, we witness a battle in Zox of Pan uh, Pangea, where we get to see the Centaur Cataphracts. Uh, I'm a big fan of these units. I think they're very good uh, bully bully type units where they're not going to kill elite units very well, but they're excellent at taking out um, lightly armored troops. I think they're really, really good at taking out lightly armored troops. Uh, the reason, again, for this is their, uh, their damage output isn't very high, but they're 20 hit points with 20 protection and fairly good stats. Um, so I, I think they're really good at just beating up chaff, but most elite units will tear through centaurs. Uh, we we'll also get to check the bless, which is morale blood surge. Likely there's something else in here. There's something imprisoned in there, likely. Um, we'll find out, or maybe it is just blood surge. Uh, who knows? It's dryad hoplites for Pangea, so they're not the best sacreds. They're not horrible, but it makes sense they have just some minor bless. Okay, so now here we're going to fight... Uh, some cav, some heavy cav. Uh, again, I have kind of like a front line that's going to walk instead of fly. Uh, unfortunately, they don't have earth melders to save them. Uh, <laughs> I got a really lucky route, though. That kind of helps. And now that we're in the back, uh, commanders go down, and we're good to go. Uh, that was just a lucky route on the ca heavy cav. I think, at least. Yeah, this could have gone so much worse. And then we have uh, 22 blood slaves. That is a lot. I guess we're going to be a blood nation later. Uh, I'll, I'll force it later down the line with scouts. Uh, and that'll be fun. So around here, I will do some diplomacy. Uh, I start talking to Pangea that I'm telling him, hey, I'm going to go take Kingdom of Dara at 105. Uh, let's have a non-aggression pack 3 or whatever. I know this is like a super greedy play for me. Um, but, you know, I'm Kalem. Like, I can get to the Kingdom of Dara from my capital, right? Yeah, I can get there from my cap. So this is just regular Caleb nonsense. Uh, you'll notice I've also moved out almost all of my uh, Iron Crafters because uh, some of my tactics, or, or some, not my tactics, some of my strategies for how I'm going to play this relies heavily on the Iron Crafters. And for the Iron Crafters to do just about anything, they need a lot of Earth Gems. So I figured the sooner I site search everything with Earth, the higher my gem income is going to be, the sooner it's going to be that high. And um, the more crap I can do with my earth, uh, my Iron Crafters. Uh, at this point, I think I also um, made a non-aggression pack with TNG, uh, especially stipulating, like, hey, don't don't touch this. This is mine. If you touch it, uh, we're at war. And I noticed that he has an early fort. It's turn 11, or early palisade, I should say. 
which is fine. I'm building two palaces, which brings me now to the uh, second big mistake I've done in this game, which was I started building these two forts in a defensive triangle around this forest where I'm now building a temple because I want to recruit woodhenge druids. And I make this, this mistake every darn game where I forget they need the one resource to get recruited. So I'll have these two palisades up, but once I think just one of them becomes a fortress, not even both, I think just one of them becomes a fortress. This province, because of the citadel, a palisade and a fortress, will no longer have any resources. So despite me building this temple and lab, uh, I will not be able to recruit many Woodhenge Druids here because this province will be resource starved. And since it works off of uh, percentages, I can't just send like an Iron Crafter in there to provide the resources, which would be a cool mechanic, mind you. But hey, it is what it is. Uh, let's see, where are we at? All right, so let's move on to the next one. Uh, I think I missed a turn here, too. Let's see, okay. So now I think, yeah, we're, we're skipping turn 12. I, I don't think I saved it for whatever reason. We're going to turn 13, where we now have uh, Paul Bearer. Uh, my god has come up. And we witness now the me wrapping up the battle in Pepper Plain. I've added just whatever I can scrounge from my capital. So that includes these uh, Iron Crows. And this time I don't make the mistake of doing attack archers. Not that there's any archers to attack. I just jump straight on the mages. Lose a ton of troops to Falling Frosts. Cover says Water Magic's not a great spell. That's a great spell. Like he's Water 1 using a gem to cast it. He just demolished everything. Or is it this guy that did it? Oh, this guy's the one that did it. Regardless. Very good spell at clearing Light Armor troops. Or not even... Yeah, Light Armor troops. Because it, it's uh, it's not armor negating. So we lose a lot um, of the Spire Horn to just basic heavy infantry. Because, well, I th I'm one of the few that thinks basic heavy infantry, like with the Chainmail Hauberks. This is my my favorite one's the Plate Curious, but my second favorite one's the Chainmail Hauberk uh, for infantry units. I think this variety of heavy infantry is pretty darn good and worth using uh, if you don't have, you know, any other replacement. Uh, regardless, I just outnumber them, and despite losing a ton of Spirehorn, especially to the stupid wizards, uh, we take the Pepper Planes. We have two more events where some crap happens and magic goes up. And then I get some nature gems in a different province. So Misfortune was merciful with me this turn. And the throne that I am going to end up getting is the inner throne. So it's going to get order plus one, which is good. If I would have gotten order three, it'd be kind of sad. But since I went order two, uh, this kind of bumps me up a bit. And that's going to help me a lot. Uh, very importantly, I'm going to start getting blood slaves and earth gems, both of which I absolutely love, because I would like to get into blood later. Uh, I'll be doing that by empowering scouts and blood hunting manually. It's going to be really, really dirty, really, really inefficient. But if I break into blood pretty hard later on, it'll all be worth it. Uh, especially because I don't really have the most powerful late game with this nation. I pretty much have guaranteed death in my late game. And, you know, these guys doing things. But it's rough. It, it, it's kind of spotty. <laughs> it's kind of spotty. And I'll have a, a high nature due to uh, Paul Bearer. But... Yeah, uh, to give him some credit, this is the Mighty Paul Bear with um, Defender Titan paths. Uh, in my capital during spring, he has absurd amount of hit points. It's pretty darn good. Uh, right now, I'm just sending him out to Site Search. Uh, technically, I shouldn't be doing this because I do need some research to, you know, do anything in this game. But uh, it it's useful to Site Search with this guy because I got nothing else, especially for Nature or High Earth. Uh, let's move on to turn 14. Oh, ooh, ooh, ooh. that's the wrong one. Turn 14 is... I gotta relabel these uh, video numbers. Okay, so here we find a magic site. We find some quicksand, and I don't think I found too much else. Uh, we lose some people in the Boar Woods. That mass site searching I did earlier really just gave me this, which, hey, this is really good. Two of these, so two Earth, two Astral, that's really good, but really I got not much else. And now I got some quicksand. So I'm at five, five Earth per munch. Per month. That's pretty good. Uh, the important thing of turn 14 is at this point, TNC and Ulm are at a big war. How this occurred is TNC sent Ulm a message in Discord saying, hey, would you like a non-aggression pact? 
Ulm apparently was late in responding, but eventually said, yes, I would love an non-aggression pact. To which Tianxi didn't say anything after. Um, Ulm thought they then had the non-aggression pact, and Tianxi attacked. Now, Ulm could have confirmed, uh, you know, Tianxi's radio silence, but that didn't happen. Uh, Tianxi also has two forts here on the border. Uh, so that's kind of crazy. Uh, you would think it's turn 14, like I only have, I mean, I'm, I'm always slow for getting my stuff up, but I've only got one fort. I'm about to get my second one. He's already got a fortress and a palisade, and they're both here. So here, I was always think I was thinking already before this war started that TNT was really planning on rushing me, regardless. Uh, again, this is the armor player from the 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 Arco game, and I thought, okay, this is like anti Zan forts right here. Uh, but no, we'll, we'll see more about that later. So he he attacks Ulm, kind of blitz of him while Ulm was, Ulm's pants are down. Ulm didn't have the greatest expansion, and as a consequence to this, I'm sending a message to TNT, and it's just kind of simple. Hi there, and ending our nap three, you'll have these turns to prepare. To prepare, see you on turn 18. That way, everything is absolutely spelled out. This player is a little bit of a weasel, so I want nothing left to chance. These are the three turns you have as part of our agreement. On turn 18, you're fair game. Uh, and I think that's pretty much it for this turn. Let's move on to the next one. And I think this one we'll, we'll talk more about what my actual plans are for this war. Uh, luckily, Paul Bearer finds two magic sites in the Henwood. So moving them up and doing all that does work out for me. Um, we get an extra water and air gem and an extra nature gem. So, so far, at least these two forests have come in clutch for my gems. And, and then everywhere else is just kind of like, come on, guys, do something. Um, so here, I've already moved up most of my army. My thoughts for this war, or at least my game plan, as I scout him out and witness all of this crap, is... And let me let me talk about his end first. We realize he is not building mages or labs or temples. He's just building forts and producing barbarian heavy cab. I don't even see any ancestor vessels in this army. So I think he's just spamming out these heavy cav and hoping that he can kill somebody before their mages are any sorts of useful. And it looks like it's working. That is a lot of heavy horse. Um, they're 20 gold each, which is fantastically cheap. Let me let me actually pull them up real quick. Oh, what is this? Fellows. Uh, this is probably one of the best cavalry units in the game um, by a good margin, just because of their gold cost to their other costs and their stats and their everything is just fantastic. Uh, and then, and then on top of that, these are recruit anywhere. You don't need to. You don't need to recruit them in a fort, which is kind of weird that he's building all these forts. Um, you, here, you even see he just took this province from Ulm. He's building another fort here. <laughs> this guy's crazy. Um, I don't know what the, his neighbors are doing. That they think. Well, I know what Utgard's doing. Utgard and Pan are fighting Raga. Um, but I, I don't know what's going on here. I don't know what's going on here. Uh, that nobody is attacking TNG. This is crazy to me. Um, but whatever. I'm going to do that. So my first steps is I need to get in position scouts, because I need visibility on everything he's doing. Uh, and I'm going to have these squads of Raven Guard being stealthy little craps. And I'm still not too sold on them to fight into like a PD dump. Like if you do a 20 PD dump, I'm pretty sure these guys would all die. Uh, but if I have them picking at him from the back over here where he's not expecting, I'm either forcing him to put PD dumps in his rear, which are useless to him uh, in, in terms of fighting my vanguard, or sending units that could be going to the front lines to fight me down here. He's having to send them to the back to either retake land or deal with my raiders. So I really don't want to send these raven guard into uh, any, any of these frontal provinces. I want them to be attacking back here. Um, what's going on this turn? So, with that said, there is nothing in the Kalian roster that can actually fight Barb Heavy Horse. Gold efficiently, that is. Nothing works. <laughs> Maybe in Cold 3 and Iceclad can, can do it, but I didn't even bother testing that because the war is going to be conducted in his territory. He is not coming into my lands. 
uh, mainly because he, he's going to have nothing to do here. The weakness of Barb the Heavy Horse is they don't have... For 20 gold, you get one seed strength. For 8 gold... Or not this guy. Where's the other one? For 8 gold, I get one seed strength. So he, he can't break my horse. That, that's just not going to happen. Like If I see him coming in here with 100 horsemen, I can probably recruit like 50 Raptorian militia that turn. And then in further turns, I can even send in, uh, where are they, the Raven Guard. I can stealth them into the fort and provide even more uh, like spot siege defense. So if I have just like 100 of the guys running around just adding 100 siege defense to my fort, he literally cannot break my horse. Um, and that's just if we were doing a troop versus troop warfare. Um, oh, to note, uh, Earthbound with, I don't even know if they need a proper bless. Earthbound with just like legions of steel and strength of giants, maybe, I think they could just mop the floor with Barb Heavy Horse because they're full plate and they have their reinvigoration. That's a lot of reinvigoration. Uh, I think Earthbound could mop the floor, but obviously due to the map move eight, that's just not going to happen for me. Um, so in a normal case, uh, with Calum, my option to fight these guys, I think the best one would be uh, evocations because they're probably going to do this big death ball uh, to make my flying attacks less effective. So by them, you know, bunching themselves up like that, they would open themselves up to thunder strikes and banefire, which is pretty cool. Unfortunately, that's not the Calum that I'm playing. I'm not playing that Calum right now. Uh, the Calum that I'm playing says, "Ooh, look, 210 barb heavy horsemen." They don't have any mages. I just grabbed this guy, put on some gear on him. Uh, I, I think a black steel, like just black steel full plate by itself, and then just jump in there with his fist, and he will kill all of these horsemen, or he will force them to time out and retreat. Uh, they don't have magic weapons. They don't have anything. This guy can do moss body, iron skin, and mist form. And that's it. Once all of those, those three buffs go on him, not even counting regeneration or anything else, once those three buffs land on him, this unit cannot hurt him. It's statistically improbable that they will even do one damage to him. So my goal with this war is when it starts, I want to blitz these two forts. I want to blitz these two forts. Uh, I want to turn one crack at least one of them, take it for myself, go get the other one, and then with these two forts under my control, I can then enact the thing that I was saying where due to the siege defense of flying units, he can't break these forts. And with these two forts being impassable, uh, his armies are going to start bunching up where he's going to try to get you know stack sizes like this, stuck on one of the forts trying to siege it, and then I just show up with pallbearer and wipe them all out. While he's you know forcing his units to be in one big blob on my forts to get eliminated by pallbearer, I do want to be you know raiding and being in an horrible horrible person and just jumping all over everywhere and being annoying and wherever he isn't is where i want to be because although these heavy horse are cavalry units it's in their name they're heavy uh their man move is 14. that's the movement speed of medium infantry for most nations like these are super heavy infantry or not these guys oh these are the super heavy infantry at, at 18. I think they're light infantry. Okay, their light infantry move at 12. So this other guy's got a horse and moves just barely faster than the regular light infantry. It's I, I know Pythium, they're not in this game, but as an example, Pythium's heavy infantry moves them at move 14 or, or 16. Uh, their medium infantry is at 16. So just to give you an example, like they, they may be horsemen, but they're slow. They're very, very slow. And then this terrain here, like he's going to have these two forts, right? But this terrain here already slows him down. These three provinces already slow him down. Although, this one has a really big road, this swamp. That's kind of crazy. I didn't notice that. Uh, regardless, these three pieces of terrain should slow him down significantly, which means I just have to worry about what's going on over here. His capital is here on 18, which means the two most important provinces for me to cut off are going to be these two. Because I think from here, he can still reach here as long as all three are under his control in one turn. Uh, once I start sieging, uh, what is this, w Waka? Once I start sieging Waka, uh, I don't think he can make that trip, but it doesn't matter. Um, hopefully his pants are down, he's fighting Ulm, and he's not ready. Um, back here, we're just moving some logistics around, have my generals pick up troops, bring them to the front, and so on. 
so yeah, that's the overall game plan for my war with TNG. I'm communicating with Ulm a lot and you know, doing what I can to help him out. I don't have as many scouts there to see what Ulm's got, but I feel like Zweihanders should do fine. Um, Atlantis is working with somebody, I can't remember who it was, to attack Gath. Gath is down here. And that's going well for Atlantis and the other guy. Uh, Pan and Utgard are fighting Raga. Uh, I talked a lot with Pan about it, and that's why he ended up keeping Kingdom of Daro 105. I let him have it for a you know mutual benefit kind of non-aggression pack deal. I helped him out telling, hey, look, um, if it were up to me to fight the Yedans, you just get a bunch of satyrs to screen your Minotaur. And if the satyrs eat the lance charge, a grove guard, a grove guard, let me pull that up for you guys. A grove guard, because you don't see them too often. This unit will eat the Yedans for breakfast. Easily. Not, not even just, it, it, it might not even be close. If the Zyedin loses the lance charge, killing like one of these idiots, this guy just destroys the Yedans easily. Um, he has a lot of hit points. He has a lot of protection. You know, 20 body protection, 20, 18 head. Uh, which it's very likely, by the way, that the Yedans will do head hits. Uh, that's another key thing because they're so their size is large. Uh, so ma the main one would, I guess, be that iron cap, that 18 head protection. But then when they berserk, they get an, another plus three natural protection. So it's it would be difficult for Zyedans and their broadswords to chew through 25 hit points with the 20 21 ish body armor that they'll have while berserking. Meanwhile, this guy's going to be sitting there at 14 attack with his. Uh, battle axe, this battle axe, which since it is length two, cannot be repelled by a Zyedin, and it's just going to tear it through easily. The only criteria is again, and let me pull up the Zyedin real quick. The only criteria again is that the Zyedin's lance charge needs to be used on some worthless unit like a Zater, not on the Grove Guard. And it turned out uh, in the combat test that is exactly how that fight went down. So I'm kind of happy about that. Uh, Lady H. Pangea is one of the nations that I, I really... I, I like the Pangeas in general. And Lady H. Pangea is one of the ones I, I look forward to playing one day. Okay, so that's a lot of rambling, but this is going to be, I guess, the, the primary war I'm going to do. So, yeah, I think this was a good... A, a, a very good stop stopping point. So, see you guys next time.